Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. First real mechanical episode in my new garage. A little bit different than what we're used to, but I am doing an engine swap on my John Deere STX 38 lawnmower. I just got a 20,000 yards of hydro seating and the old Kohler engine that came with it is not going to cut it. I mean, it was, I did a lot of work on it, restored the deck, changed the tires. So I didn't want to spend the two grand, 2,400 bucks on a new Riding mower, I spent the 533 on a Briggs & Stratton on Amazon. It's a 17 half horsepower, so it's more horsepower. Uh, the shaft size is the same, and that's really the key to doing an engine swap is the shaft diameter and length need to be the same. And these are one inch, um, three and five sixteenths length, and the bolt pattern is the same. Let me pull the new motor out and show you the old motor and the new motor side by side. part about working on small engines is you can pick them up as long as you're not a girly man. The motors are very similar. Their bolt patterns are the same uh, and like I said the shaft diameter is the same and they're keyed the same. So that is the key. The nice thing about the Briggs and Stratton is it comes pre-rested on the shaft so that's good. Um, and in true Amazon made in China fashion, the bolt holes are uh, threaded, which is really helpful. Now, luckily, these are all through holes, so I can just uh, put a bolt in and then cinch it down on the top with a lock nut, which is great. That one had actually worked itself loose and was shaking itself to death and I never picked up on it. So there's, that was one challenge I was anticipating, so that's not a problem. Hopefully the bolt holes line up perfectly. If they don't, I'll just drill a new hole in the deck. And the other major challenge is going to be electrical. And that's where I'm probably gonna spend most of my time on this episode because there's not a lot of good videos on how to convert a Kohler wiring to a Briggs & Stratton wiring. I almost forgot to mention this. So the model I bought was the cheapest 17 and horsepower Briggs and & Stratton, and it's got a side dump exhaust, and this is the muffler, okay? If you've got an STX 38 with a hood, this will not clear. They make another one that has a goofy sort of tube that comes around and down through this hole where the original um, John Deere exhaust, because that's a bottom dump exhaust goes through and you can reuse or and it actually comes with a muffler sorry i've never had a hood on this it was given to me by a subscriber and i don't i don't care for a hood not that i don't like them i just don't care so i did the side dump exhaust better for me more ground clearance for rock crawling in the front so uh yeah i'm gonna clean up the shaft a little bit and then uh throw it up easy easy <laughs> Get in the hole. Please fit, please fit. Please don't make a fool of me. And fingers, okay. Got a little interference with the flange. Let me pull this off again. Got a little bit of interference with this flange on the fuel tank. Is that metal? No, oh, it's plastic. So I need to clearance this a little bit. You know, I'm going to try to take off a little more than I need because you can always put some back. Oh, nice and easy, nice and easy. Oh, fingers, fingers. Okay. So now what am I hitting? Okay, this upper section here. Kind of digging this small engine stuff. You can just pick them up. You don't need a... I don't need a hoist, I don't need a stand. Okay, that's on there. Ooh. Ooh, that's really close. Yeah, man, yeah. I'm just getting some bolts through here, make sure that works. So I'm gonna use a crush washer, sorry, lock washer and double nut it. And probably Loctite it. 
as I mentioned before, they were nice enough to send the shaft uh, pre, pre-rusted. So I put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the uh, shaft here. Another thing I didn't mention was that uh, the only difference is between these motors down here on the shaft is this bolt, the stock bolt is, uh, is a 3 8 fine thread and this replacement one is a 7 16 Luckily this uh, hub here accepts the 7 16 So I just had to run to the parts store and get a 7 16 fine thread, 4 inch. Oh, now the motor's turning. That's good, motor turns. Just a couple of odds and ends before we uh, fill her up with oil. Or, sorry, before I wire her, actually. Gotta get the throttle figured out here. Let me get this in here. There's a little hole. Okay, that does fit that way. Perfect. So that works, throttle works. And we're going to do a fuel filter out of the way. Push that on. Okay. Clamp back over here. Alright, so this side of the uh, swap is done. The common upgrade is to buy this oil drain kit. It just comes with this. Uh, quick release oil plug and a cheapo plastic tube. It's a lot better than, you know, these things just drain right onto the deck, which is worthless. So I'm using a 7 16 to take the drain plug out. The other weird thing about these motors is there's no, uh, there's no uh, oil filter. Uh, there's a little bit of oil in there. Okay. Not a big deal. We'll just get this on and I'll plug it up. Now it's hitting the deck, which is kind of annoying. But once this is on, it's on, so, so I can't really get it to hand tight, so we'll just do it there. We'll see if she leaks. If she leaks, we'll tighten her up. Let's see if this works here. Now for the, obviously this goes onto the starter motor here. Luckily that appears to reach. Now that I've got everything hooked up, I thought I would also look at the operator's manual. It doesn't have anything about wiring. Right, just double checking. So yes, I was looking at the, uh, oh, look at that, the green death. I've done quite a bit of investigating on the wiring. Let me bring you in close here. So in order to make this work, and I'm sorry for the lighting, but it's getting dark and my electricians haven't hooked up the lights yet. So from the Briggs and Stratton, you take the red wire from the uh, voltage regulator or whatever. It's not, it's not really a voltage regulator, it's like a diode. It takes AC power from the stator, which is under the flywheel. There's no alternator hanging off, right? There's windings under the flywheel. So it's a um, AC coming in, DC coming out. So you do that to your red wire from your Briggs and Stratton. The white wire goes to the black wire on the Briggs and Stratton. So the white wire from the Kohler, um, sorry, from the STX38, to the black wire on the Kohler, that's the coil. I had this yellow wire that was wrapped in with the red and uh, white wires. It was like loomed in with them. And it has 12 volts in the on and run position. So I've connected this to the fuel solenoid and I can hear it clicking. This is some Malucas oil, uh, EB Zinc Plus zinc additive. I would normally never put this in a lawnmower, but I read some reviews that a lot of, not a lot, enough that some people's uh, crank or camshaft was uh, running flat. So I'm put half, about half of the, this bottle, or just a little bit even, in here. So half, quite half. Just as a sort of startup oil, just in case it's true that the uh, camshafts run flat on this. And then that way I'm kind of insured. If the, you do this and it blows up your motor, I'm sorry. I'm just using my common sense here. 
I may be off, way off. So these take about 40 ounces is what the book says. It's 5 weight 30 in case you're wondering. Yeah, that's right there. Pretty sure fuel is not supposed to look like lemonade, so I obviously have a fuel contamination issue, and that's probably why it's not firing. So I'll go get some fresh gas. Mm -hmm. So that was obviously bad gas. I put fresh gas in it, so hopefully now it'll start. So let's give it a rip. I hear the solenoid. Good! Yes! Let's check the oil while the exhaust burns off whatever crud was in there before. These dipsticks are really hard to read. Yeah, it's okay. Nice. Alright, I'm going to permanently wire these up. That was pretty successful. That was the first engine swap in Matt's new garage. Not too bad, man. Not too bad. 